Good morning and welcome to 4 Fantasy Sake on the 4 Frequency Sake Network. The 4 Frequency Sake Network is presented by Durham Remodeling and Ryan Allison Tattoo. And 4 Fantasy Sake is presented by Clint's Draft House Pizza and Grill. I actually got all of the sponsors right today. It is going to be a good Sunday morning. All right, welcome in. I am your host, Doug, this week. I have got with me Dan and Brian. Jordan will be along shortly. He's dealing with snow issues and is on his way back from breakfast. So he'll be here in a little bit. But gentlemen, we're at week 12. We've already seen, um, what, probably four games on the slate already. Um, Any quick early thoughts before we jump into the usual business? Any thoughts from the first four that we saw? God, that, that, that Cowboys defense is just so good. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I good. would have to say all four games did not – none of them lived up to any great expectations or anything. So hopefully everybody enjoyed their turkey and stuffing and everything else they had. What did you guys think of a Black Friday game? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I didn't watch it. I liked, I liked the idea of it. I think it was one of those that – you know, it's I feel like primetime games this year, like where we've seen so much of the Jets and the Giants and the Bills, it was, you know, prepared for, you know, all three New York teams are going to be good. So, you know, in theory, at the beginning of the season when they scheduled this, you'd have Tua versus Aaron Rodgers. You wouldn't have, you know, Zach, um, Tim Boyle versus Tua on a Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Right. Yeah, I, th- I agree. Totally agree. The idea was a good idea. and The game would have been better. I mean, two have played down to the level of Tim Boyle, unfortunately. So, All right. So let's take a quick look. Let's jump into Fantasy Tinder. Let's see what DJ has cooked up for us this week. All right. I cannot read that. So I guess we're going to start with Patty Mahomes because, of course, we always start with that. Um, we'll finish as QB1 despite the Chiefs' inconsistent offense. Uh, I'm swiping left as long as uh, CJ Stroud is active this year. He's, I think he's going to finish higher than Mahomes, and I don't even think CJ Stroud's what it's Sam Howell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what you and um, that's what you and and Jordan were talking about uh, Wednesday night. Yeah, and I mean he's, it's it just feels like an off year. Maybe it's like lingering problem from the ankle they just haven't um, disclosed out to everyone. But I mean, as long as you know, Ron Rivera is letting Sam Howell throw 40 times a game. I don't see Mahomes catching up unless, you know, Howell goes for five interceptions a game the next six weeks. Yeah, yeah I would have to swipe left here as well. He may, he may not even finish QB2. I mean, two has still got the opportunity for that as well. So, I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not putting um, him at QB1. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think there's there's enough there's enough good other guys out there. Um, with the way that his wide receivers are struggling, that I that that's a that's a hard ask, I think, on on that part. All right, next up, Brian Robinson is the next great Alabama quarterback in the NFL. And before you guys answer this, I wanted to I wanted to say I saw a joke online this week. I can't remember where I saw it at, uh, but it said that if you accidentally drafted Brian Robinson ahead of Bijan Robinson. Um, in the first round, you actually came out ahead on that. <laughs> I mean, he's great. I think I think a lot of people were kind of waiting for this to happen um, because they keep running that split backfield between him and Antonio Gibson, and they had that third back that started getting reps, and I think just he kind of just said, I'm taking over now. Um, I think this is what people were expecting from him last year, but obviously, you know, he missed the first half of the game with the leg injury. Um, after getting shot. So I think it's – I'm going to swipe – I'll swipe right but leave it in the messages because we see too many one-hit wonder years in the NFL, and this would be something to see. Can he keep this up consistently in Washington? I'm going to swipe left here. It's all, To me, it's all about the definition of great running back, which I'm going to assume is a top 12 RB1 running back. I think he's still on the RB2 radar as opposed to the RB1. So he's fine, but he's not going to reach the top 12. Yeah, I think I'm more like Danny. I think that we're going to have um, – I'm swiping right, but I'm leaving him in the messages just because he's – I think the talent's there. I think it's a matter of 
whether it's of what of opportunity um and whether he's going to get enough kind of shots at it so that's kind of where i am with with that all right moving on Devontae adams can continue a wide receiver one pace with aiden o'connell at quarterback i'll i'll swipe right and leave it in the messages for sure here he's going to get he's going to get the volume to keep him as a low-end wide receiver one but he's He's not going to be, reach top five or anything like that. It, it would just be low end at best. I'm going to close out of the app and reopen it and get a new one. I just, I, 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 there's nothing you can really say with this Raiders team. It doesn't look, it looks like they're trying to not rebuild by slowly rebuilding at the same time. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for Aiden O'Connell to turn back into a pumpkin. I don't. I don't see that. So I think I'm swiping left on this one. I don't, I don't believe in, in that. I don't think that that's, I don't think that that even with volume, I don't think that, that there's just enough um, there to, to make it happen. All right. Last one here. Sammy Laporta should be, as I get in real close, should be dynasty tight end. I'm going to assume that says dynasty tight end one. I cannot read that on my screen. I need to talk to Jarvis about that. I'm going to with, – with, it's a very hard question, but I think as long as Travis Kelsey's still playing, I'll have to swipe left, but not a real hard swipe for sure. I'm, I'm going to swipe left on this one. I, I really like Laporta, but the same point as Brian. If um, As long as Travis Kelsey's in the league, he's going to you know, consistently be projected – tight end one. I mean, I could see him hitting tight end two next year just because of Andrew's injury and him missing some games to start next year. He might not start off on a hot uh, hot pace next year. But um, we always see like rookies in their second year seem to like not have the best seasons and kind of struggle. So, I mean, that he's kind of up for that as well. So, I'd, I'd say when you get closer toward like the next two or three years, you could probably see it. But next year, no. And then, not to interrupt, but he may not be the best rookie tight end. We'll just see where it, where it lands up between Kincaid and Laporta because Kincaid's starting to – the last three or four games has really come on as well. So, True. I think I am going to swipe right on that one. I, I like Laporta a lot. I like the situation. Um, so I think I am going to swipe right on that guy just to be – just to be safe. Um, just too much – I like the, the projection in the future too much, I think, for, for me on that one. Oh, where are we at? We are a little ahead of schedule on that because that's our yeah, that's our last slide. Um, so we're a little ahead of the schedule on on that. Um, what do you guys want to do? You want to jump to a break early? Or we want to. You guys got something else we want to discuss real quick? I just want to see, uh, especially with Brian being a Steelers fan. What's the what's your kind of feeling going into this week with? You know, you don't know Matt Canada anymore, but you still have Kenny Pickett, which if you can see by my caption, I'm his number one hater. Um, but like what what's kind of your thoughts as a Steelers fan going into this week where um going against like an injured Bengals team? I'm assuming that they're gonna they're gonna try to um possibly pound the rock even more. Um I, I could see maybe fifteen carries each from both from both Najee. And Jalen Warren, it would not shock me, or at least 15 total touches for each. But as a Steelers fan, I would honestly enjoy if they if they decide to throw the ball a little bit more. I don't. I know Pickett so far looks poor, but a lot of that is the fact they haven't given him much opportunity either. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see that game because I feel like for the fact that Pittsburgh. It, you know, we've seen a lot of these teams once their new head coordinators and their new head coaches are coming in, they've played really well that first week. Um, only being a point and a half favorite to a Bengals team that doesn't have a starting quarterback uh, just seemed really, uh, really interesting to me. So I kind of I want to see how that it might be my game to watch this week. It might be a miserable one for me to watch, but I'm really interested to see what that happens, how that happens. My only concern for the Steelers' defense is statistically they haven't performed exceedingly well against either the run or the pass. So, and then along with that, over the last few games, I've had them in, as a, my fantasy defense, and they have not 
made any of the big plays you've become accustomed to with the Steelers defense. So I'm hoping today is the day they actually decide to come and play. The only reason they scored the Browns scored so few points last week is because Dorian Robbins Robinson was a starting quarterback, not because the Steelers did much. Yeah, and they had to run the ball a lot, and that run the run defense at least has been somewhat solid in Pittsburgh. I think I think a, a game that I think and I'll talk and touch over it when I do um my my game my little my six seven plays. I think a game that a lot of people are kind of overlooking is going to be the Colts and the Buccaneers. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game, but I think uh, Baker Mayfield is going to have a great game this week. That's so funny. That That's my uh, that's actually my game of the week, so I didn't uh, I didn't overlook that one, for, but I don't, I don't want to reveal too much. But I will say that from a DFS perspective, I took the opposite sideline. So. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. So make sure you stay tuned later for that so that we can so you can get all of the information about that game that you want. All right. I think that's going to take us to the first break. Um, now that I've got everything set up the way that it needs to be set up, and I can figure I figured all this out because this is not my first rodeo. All right. So we will take a quick break. Um, on the other side of that, we will play the connections game. Um, I don't know how hard it is this week, guys. I had him send me the answer key. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm begging for easy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes this week. Um, all right, so we'll hit the we'll hit the commercial break and we'll play that on the other side. Here we go. Durham Remodeling has been serving the Quad Cities area since 1973, and with over 50 years of excellence on their track record, you'll see why it's so easy to trust their experts when it comes to all of your home improvement projects. This family-owned business has you covered on all your needs. Protect your home or building from the elements today and get great roof repair services. Need new windows? No problem. Durham Remodeling can upgrade your windows and doors. Whether you want to upgrade the little details in your home or office, or want to tear a room down and start fresh, the expert contractors at Durham Remodeling have your back. Even the smallest changes can completely transform your space. Ready to start entertaining your friends for backyard barbecues? Durham Remodeling will help you plan, design, and build your deck and patio for the perfect outdoor space. Durham Remodeling's work is 100% guaranteed, so you can rest assured that you're getting the best service around. Call 309-786-6715 today for your free estimate for all your roofing, siding, flooring, windows, and painting needs. That's Durham Remodeling, 309-786-6715. My name's Ryan Allison. I've spent over a decade immersed in the art of tattooing. Sharply honing my skills has materialized into a diverse and prestigious body of work. Each tattoo reflects my relentless pursuit of excellence, and every client I work with is a living embodiment of that unwavering commitment. I will gladly and wholeheartedly embrace your distinct vision. For Fantasy's sake has teamed up with Route 96 Boutique to raise a little more cash for Toys for Tots this season. From September 10th until the end of November, 10% of all purchases made with Route 96 on Sundays will be donated to us for our Toys for Tots drive. At Route 96, they believe in girl power. They want a place that people of all shapes and sizes can shop and feel empowered and beautiful. They want you to be the best you possible, and they are committed to bringing you different styles while also providing some basics to express the true you. You can find them on Facebook and at Route96Boutique.com. Hey, there's Jordan. Welcome back. Uh, We are back. Jordan is joining us. Good to have you along, bud. Um, Real quick, on the Route 96 ad, like they said, um, this is the last week to make sure that you get in there, get some extra money in for Toys for Tots. We will be going shopping on Saturday, Uh, so make sure you keep your eye out on social media for that. We'll be posting pictures um, with all of those things. If you'd like to donate, um, reach out to DJ and I. We'll get you the PayPal, um, and we can, if you can donate. If you are playing in the Toys for Tots leagues and have not paid yet, please do. 
again, the more money that we've got, the more money we can give to the kids. That's the important thing here. Um, we want to make sure that we can make sure that the Quad City kids have a happy Christmas this year. All righty, gentlemen. Uh, let's go back to the silliness. We've got our connections ready to go. Uh, Jordan, you're just in time to get tortured. <laughs> I love it. Yep. So let's go ahead and all right. Okay. So here is what we are looking at. And I'll let you guys take a minute to marinate in all of those names. Is there a way to make it bigger? Yeah, that's what I was ask, gonna ask too. I got a long shot for one. I doubt, D, considering how complex DJ has made these, I doubt it, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Um, Zach Wilson, Dak Prescott, Purdy, and Tua, all quarterbacks who had games on uh like thanks or holiday themed games. Wilson, Prescott, Tua, and who was the fourth one? Purdy. Purdy. No. Yeah, I figured no shot. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm, I can't I'm kind of like Jordan. I can't read all the names. Can we, can we read them real quick? There we go. Here's the bigger thing. Oh, there you uh, go. Yeah, yeah very good. Justin Watson is throwing me for a loop. The hint I will give is of the four categories, three of them are more than, one of them is less than. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think of maybe something with Dobbs was with uh, different teams, but I don't think anybody else. Well, I was thinking Dobbs and Jackson, something with like rushing touchdowns, like for quarterbacks, but I don't know if Dak's been getting any of those or Jordan. I don't think Jordan Love's got any of those this year. Stroud. Stroud. I think maybe two of them. Bryce Young might have got one, I think. Let me yeah. try that. Jackson, Dobbs, Bryce Young. And Stroud all got rushing or like quarterback rushing touchdown leaders. Jackson Dobbs, so Stroud and Young, Stroud and Young. I will tell you, you are half right, and you're in the right thought process. Lamar Dobbs. I'm going to go Mayfield and Wilson, quarterback rushing yard leaders. No. no. Combine your last two thoughts together and you might get there. I'm Leading maybe... rushing yards amongst quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah you could do like said, Dobbs. Yeah. Jack and Mayfield Stroud. Nope. Oh, Stroud is, but no. Stroud. Maybe it's Dobbs, Jackson, Stroud, Tua. What if I told you two of them are not quarterbacks? Well, there's only three wide receivers on the whole board, right?
No, there's four. Quarterback heavy one. And you may want to think about those four wide receivers for another grouping. So Tyreek, Amonra, Nico. Justin Watson, right? And Justin Watson. Could it be like all had a 100-yard game? Justin Watson. Close. Those are the correct four, but they are. Justin Watson had 11 targets. That's wild. Yeah, that's that's why that's he's super crazy. high on this week. He's the number five high, uh, number fifth or number five highest owned wide receiver this week. Wow. God, this is getting brutal. Yeah. What do we have left besides quarterbacks? Brian Robinson, uh, Brian Zach Robinson, Moss. Zach Moss, and then the rest are quarterbacks. So obviously, with Doug's hint. I'm assuming that Zach Moss and Brian Robinson go with two of the quarterbacks. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Dobbs and and Lar. Mm -hmm. Something with okay. rushing totals. Yeah, something with like over maybe. I mean, maybe over fifty rushing yards and what the rushing <laughs> with more. <laughs> <laughs> DJ's twisting the knife this week. Oh my god. That was a good one. Wow. All right. You got eight left. Um, are over and under for the last two. Uh, I'd say uh, Purdy, Prescott, Tua, and Stroud. Um, Something about interceptions. Yeah, right? under, like, the lowest interception. No. No, I'm going to go with over interceptions here after Tua's last game. Oh, it didn't work anyway. Actually, you're on the right track with the, with the interception spot. Purdy, Stroud, Jordan Love. No. It's going to be something along the lines of, I think Tua, Zach Wilson. Um, there's two other pretty quarter, quarterback oh. friendly guys. I got one. Wilson, Tua, Stroud. And I'm going to go Mayfield for it, but uh, throwing two or more interceptions in a game. Nope. I think that I think switch Stroud with Bryce Young because Stroud hasn't, he's only thrown like three hit, picks. He threw two against year. Arizona. Uh, but I think that's the only two he's thrown all year. Thrown yeah, four. I think maybe a third one, but he's, he's only thrown three at the most. So, so what, what if you did uh, Wilson, Mayfield, Young, and Tua all over? A bunch of interceptions. I don't know. Five interceptions thrown. How about? Oh, no, that wasn't it. Uh, <laughs> great point. Great point. I thought that was it. Oh, it's, no, it is Wills Wilson. Okay. Did we? We didn't get the right four together? No. Doesn't appear so. You were close, though, because I thought you guys had it. Then maybe it's not Tua. Maybe it's Love. Maybe it's Wilson, Mayfield, Young, Love. Young Love. Young Love. <laughs> Can't beat it. Wilson. Josh Kitty allegations. Mayfield. Love and Young. Young. And it is. Not to us. I will tell you, it's not to us. So Jordan I'm Love. Surprise. It's not. It's not Jordan Love either. Mm -mm. It can't be Stroud if it's more interceptions for sure. You think it's Prescott? Is it Dak? And Dak's not been bad this year. It was just bad last year. That's what he I was thinking. Him. Interceptions last year. Oh, wow! Through a shot at his own home. quarterback. Right. Wow, I like that. So, then, what puts these four together? I'll let you take a guess at those four. Let's see. Where did he go to college? Is it? No, I was going to say throw for 300 yards in a game, but that's not. 
It actually is. Good job. I did not job. think Brock Purdy threw for 300. Oh, week one he Eight. did. Week one. I, I no, thought he might have done week. it for 300 last week, too. He did. Yeah. In week 11. Well. That one was a little rough. We did pretty good with that. I tell you what, besides the first week, they've all been a little rough. I know. I keep telling him to make him easier, and he just doesn't. So I we just like to watch people suffer, to be quite honest. I'm told we need to play Immaculate Grid. That one would be fun. He's yeah. going to wait till he's hosting and make it the easiest, I'm sure. Right. He, he goes, I blame you guys, not game. <laughs> he'll give he'll give the hints like he did the first time. He'll be like, Joe, you know this one, and just leave it at that. <laughs> one, of, one of these weeks, I'll put it together, and we'll just to watch him like struggle. And it's just all anti Chiefs. Yes, <laughs> hey, that'd be too easy. He he was the little boy that pulled wings off of insects. I got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's. I'm sure he had his magnifying glass out. <laughs> and this just in Brian fired from for frequency sake network. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, so that is that was connections for this week. Um, not bad, not bad. I like I like being in charge of the uh, in charge of that because that, I I would not get any of those to be honest with you guys. So I I totally in camp. I think as long as we got it in within the segment time, that's pretty good. So yeah, that's true. That's basically kind of all we're shooting for on on that guy. All righty, so we will take a break on the back side of this. Then uh, you guys will talk some DFS. So let me fire up break two and find break two, and we will be ready to go. Located in the Belgium neighborhood of Seventh Street in Moline, Clint's Draft House Pizza and Grill is home to some of the Quad City's best food and drink specials. On Sundays, there's no better place to be. Clint's is serving up $1 wings and $2.50 drafts and domestics all day. And your favorite team playing in those out-of-market games? You'll never miss a second of the action on one of their 10 screens with NFL Sunday Ticket. And after you've had your wing and beer fix, finish off your football watching experience with one of their famous Quad City-style pizzas. And folks, they know pizza. They've been spinning QC-style pies for the last 24 years. So make Clint's part of your Sunday football routine Clint's Draft House Pizza and Grill, 7th Street in Moline. Are you looking for the largest slice in the Quad Cities? The right spot is Lopez Pizza. It's better than a hot dog and a handshake. They have two great locations, Uptown on Brady for your delivery and catering needs, and Downtown at 429 East 3rd Street in Davenport for the full experience. Lopez is family-owned and family-friendly. Into wrestling like us, you can catch shows every day and twice on Sunday at their downtown location. Who knows, you may run into a local wrestler or a local podcaster or two while you're there. Stop by each month for a different featured slice by various artists. Lopez Pizza, a proud sponsor of the Card Subject to Change podcast on the For Frequency Sake podcast network. For Frequency Sake has you covered on all things sports. From the squared circle to the hardwood and the gridiron to the speedway, we've got something for everyone. Walk down the aisle with the boys from Card Subject to Change every Sunday as they take a deep dive into everything pro wrestling. Need your gambling fix? We've got you there. Enter Pit Row with Rod Villagomez and Fast Money as we win the checkered flag with NASCAR, Xfinity, and truck race winners and props. Football more your style? Explore the waters of NFL DFS with DFS Deep Dive with Brian Craighead and Jordan Kernan each week. More into the science portion of the game? We've got a double dose of action there. The Professor John Bush and Dennis Michelson take you into their science lab and dissect your week in the data lab. Want an analytical take? Nick Girl and the team at Gridiron AI come to you each week with The Lab. Need to know who to start last minute? The network's flagship show, for fantasy's sake, is here in a pinch. The fellows come to you live every football Sunday from 10 to 1130 Central with the week's best DFS, gambling, and lineup advice. And wrap up your Sundays with Joe Winkle and Nick Brinks as they come to you live with educated ignorance looking at all the day's action. Can't get enough of Joe? He comes to you three times a week. Not enough football on Sunday? Not a problem. Kick your feet up at lunch on Monday and slip on into the football lounge with Mark and Dan while they look at the week that was in news, notes, and more. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean.
All righty, we are back. And just one quick thing I wanted to point up. Sounds like we are renaming the show to Misconnections. That segment, anyway. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Okay, so, Brian, Jordan, what do you gentlemen have for us this week in terms of DFS plays? Well, Jordan, I'm going to let you start. I, uh, I want to apologize for not hopping on with you Friday. I was in the kidney biopsy Monday through Wednesday and was worn out from that and and Thanksgiving with the fam- families and that pretty much forgot all about doing my stuff until last <laughs> night. So, no, you're all good. Um, we there are a lot of um, you see a lot of a lot of knee jerk reactions this week. You got a lot of ownership going to like Trevor Lawrence. He was the highest scoring quarterback on the slate last week. Um, so you have uh, a lot of Trevor Lawrence. Um, it looks like Christian Kirk has finally jumped over Calvin Ridley. Uh, Calvin Ridley was one of the highest on uh, receivers on the slate as well, but Calvin Ridley's finally overtaken him here um, as we move towards the, the lock. Um, Jonathan Taylor right now is the highest owned back on the slate at almost 35%. Um, so if you're looking to gain some leverage, He's got a rough matchup against Tampa Bay. He can beat it. Um, he's getting all the touches now. Zach Moss is really more of an afterthought. But um, Jonathan Taylor, if, if you're playing Ash for a double up, you have to lock him in. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that one. If you're playing in a large-scale tournament and you want to get different, a lot of people are going to have Jonathan Taylor, so I would stay away from him in big tournaments. Um, other than that, where you can really kind of get different um, – I like the opposite side of that game with uh, C.J. Stroud being at home. I know the ja- uh, the Jags are favored in that game, but C.J. Stroud's almost under 5% owned. Um, that's where I'm going to gain leverage on the field. Um, I'm, I'm playing in the big 300,000-person 300, uh, contest today. Um, I've got a lot of Hurts to Brown. I've got a lot of Allen to Diggs, and I've got a lot of C.J. Stroud to uh, Dell and Nico Collins. So those are kind of my favorite three stacks at the moment. Well. I missed the first one, Jordan. What was the first one out of those? Uh, Jalen Hurts to AJ Brown. Yeah, I uh, I like all those stacks. It's one thing I don't know how you felt, but I had a hard time finding li- lesser priced players to target to because when when you're dealing with a J- um, Hurts and Antonio Brown, that's about off the top of my head probably sixteen five or seventeen thousand. So yeah. I had a hard time through. Going through the research this morning and seeing a lot of lesser value. Do you have any anybody that you'd like to throw out there? It was like less than five thousand that you'd like to play. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I am playing really, really middling kind of running backs. Um, I like um, uh, shot. I like Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is sixty four hundred dollars. It's he when he started the season, he was priced up about seventy seven hundred dollars. I understand that the weather's a little bit bad. I understand that uh, that Tajay Spears is getting a lot of reps, um, but Derrick Henry is still getting almost 60% of the rushing attempts. Carolina sucks against the run. Um, I'm, I'm really surprised that the Cowboys Cowboy didn't take advantage with Tony Pollard the one week, but uh, I really fully expect Derrick Henry to get the rock 20 times at least this game. Um, I'm thinking multiple touchdown game. He is in a ton of my lineups. Um, some other guys, Ramondre Stevenson at 5,800, James Conner at 5,900. Um, I really like, uh, I like Kyron Williams coming back from injury. He's a little pricey at 6,600, but he's under 10% owned. Um, I really like Kyron Williams and then, uh, Jerome Ford and Jalen Warren as well. Both of them down in the 50, I think 54 and 5,200 respectively. So, um, I, I like him down there in those in the running back range. And then as far as wide receivers, there's, um, there's six of them under 5,000 that I really like, starting with the most expensive at 4,800, Josh Downs. Um, he was hurt two weeks ago, um, and Michael Pittman really took over a lot of the snap share and a lot of the counts. Um, Downs was only on the field for 20% of the snaps, but they had a bye week, and now he hasn't had an injury designation all week. He's practiced in full, and he is the favorite target for Gardner Minshew. So I fully expect him um, to command some of those targets again. Then you've got Demario Douglas from the Patriots at 4,400. He's another guy who you know he's getting ever since. Uh, I can't think of the guy who went down. I, it's been bugging me all week, and I still can't figure it out. But um, oh, for um, the Patriots, Henry Bourne. 
Kendrick Bourne. Yeah, maybe? so ever, ever ever since Bourne went down, Demario Douglas has gotten at least six targets in the last four weeks. Um, then after that, you can take your pick between uh, Rondale Moore at thirty six hundred, but I'm going down to Greg Dortch at thirty three. Uh, Rondale Moore had the long touch catch, but that was the only catch he had all game. Marquise Brown is questionable. They're without uh, Michael Wilson again. So um, I really like Greg Dutch, who saw targets last week uh, between him and McBride. McBride's another tight end that I've been going after. And then uh, the last guy who was in the misconnections, uh, Justin Watson. Right now he's, he's moved down. So he's the seventh highest wide receiver owned, but he's men's salary. He saw 11 targets last week. I, I fully expect him not to get 11 targets. But, you know, even if he has half, even if he has six targets, say there's five of them, I mean, five points right there and then add the whatever yardage. If he comes up with 10 points, he pays off his salary easily. So he's another guy. Um, oh, and then uh, Khalil Shakir. I really, really, really like Khalil Shakir this week, too. My two, my two favorite pay down guys. Um, first of all, my stack, and I know it's, I know it's kind of contrarian, but you, you mentioned my other two that I like, the Philadelphia stack and the Houston stack. But I actually went with Minshew and Downs as, as my stack, which allowed me to pay elsewhere. And my other favorite pay down guy besides Josh Downs is actually um, Jerome Ford. And I know we've had a love-hate relationship. Well, let me rephrase that. I know you've had a love-hate relationship with Jerome Ford, but I think he's in a good spot. They're, they rank 32nd against the run. So I think he's in a yeah. smash spot here. He's just and it's and I, I I do like Jerome Ford. I just hate the fact that he's he's like him and Kareem Hunt are literally splitting 50-50. It's the same thing as uh as uh I like Jalen Warren, but he's in a 50-50 snap share with Najee Harris. They're really getting the same amount of touches. Um Warren's getting a little more uh pass catching game, but um as far as uh Hunt and Ford are getting the exact same rushes and the exact same touches, at least last week they did. So and the, um, I do I, I like Ford's upside. And the funny thing about it is, Hunt is seven. I think seven hundred dollars cheaper than Ford. I think it's fifty five and forty eight or forty nine. Yeah. So there's a big difference there. What uh, what defenses do you like this week? Um, I usually just kind of stick around. I mean, honestly, there's quite a few of them. Um, there's no defense over four thousand this week, which is the first time that it's happened all year. Usually, you have a four thousand plus defense. Um, I don't like the Browns going against Denver. I know they've been really good. They're the top price defense. But Denver has been playing really, really well lately. Um, I find myself – I like the Steelers right below them going against Cincinnati. But I find myself – I've landed on uh, the Patriots going against the Giants a lot. And um, I have no idea why the Raiders – or I'm sorry, why the Chiefs are priced at 3100 against the Raiders. Um, yeah. Aiden O'Connell doesn't scare me. I understand it's on the road. But the Chiefs defense has been – Pretty, pretty spectacular this year. Um, I will say that. Give... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was like, very rarely have they given up a, a huge game, you know, and they're putting up, you know, double digit points most weeks. So I like the Raiders at 3,100, or I'm sorry, the Chiefs at 3,100. They were my smash play. I, I was just curious if you'd hit on them as well. But the game's going to be kind of interesting because Oakland actually plays the pass pretty good, but doesn't do nearly as well against the run. So I'm, Kind of curious how that how that would pan out if it's going to be a huge game for Mahomes on the other side or not. Yeah, he's super low on for he's got a lot of upside. He's really only done it I think once this year where he scored over thirty points and it was like, man, I needed Mahomes. This could be another week, but I tell you what, man, the Raiders and the Chiefs play each other tough every single year, especially when it's in Vegas. Um, so I, I that's why I've kind of I've, I've kind of shied away from Mahomes. Um, I've literally only used. Um, I'm still kind of building lineups as we're kind of going through this, but uh, I've used, I've got a lot of Allen, a lot of Hertz, a lot of Stroud, a few Lawrence, um, a couple Murray. Um, I've got one Mayfield and one Minshew lineup right now. So I'm trying to debate. I've got about three or four more lineups to make. I think I might add a couple more Allen and a couple more Hertz in there, but I don't really see myself getting any other quarterbacks this week. I really like Kyron Williams coming back. He's uh, the Cardinals ranked thirtieth against the run, and he had a full week of practice, which the, which the word "full" is pretty important here. I think he'll come back and get the volume right away. Um, I don't, I don't know who his backup's going to be. May, maybe for Royce Freeman, I guess, but he, he's going to run as far as he can. Yeah, I like, I like that. I like the him to 
I like him to have a pretty good game too. So, and I was worried about, a, I know there's probably a question mark about a Rashad White. Um, he popped up on the injury report on Friday, but um, from what I've read and what I've heard, it sounds like they just did it as a precaution. Um, his knee locked up on Friday at practice. Yesterday he was fine, um, but they put him on the injury report just to make sure he was on there so they didn't get double later on down the road. But he's, he's good to go. It's, he's expected to have a full workload. I really like Rashad White at his price um, and his volume going against that, uh, Indianapolis. That game on paper is not the prettiest, but I think it actually would be a pretty high-scoring game. And I, Yeah, I think that's the sneaky one. And, and and the other one that I liked was the, was the Jags game. That's uh, those are the two games that I targeted because, being honest, there weren't that many high implied totals this week, and it's sometimes hard, like for the Chiefs and Eagles, to get some of those high priced guys in your lineup without making concessions elsewhere. So, yeah, I think that's uh, and I and I think that's where you're going to get a little. You're going to see a difference because a lot of people aren't going to pay up for those stacks, and that's why. Everybody's kind of in that mid-tier with Trevor Lawrence right now. Um, he's the highest-owned quarterback by about 3%. So, um, you know, you see Lawrence, and then you've got Hurts, then you've got Mayfield. Um, I, I don't like – Mayfield's over 10% owned. I'm not a big fan of, uh, of Baker Mayfield. Um, he's only ever – I mean, he's won twice before. Don't get me wrong. He can do it. But just the likelihood of him coming out and having a, a 25- to 30-point game are just – they're usually slim to none. And I think they lean on Rashad White a little bit more here. I agree. And I'd rather pay down even further for Minshew like I did. So, And for the tight end position, do you see anyone like low value? Like I've, I'm high on Evan Ingram this week because the last time these two teams played, he had about six catches. Um, and he's been getting around four catches and about 40, 50 yards a game the last couple. Um, you know, and I was look, I was just looking at it too. You have – you know, Schultz and Kincaid are pretty much like similar. I feel like similar workload this week, but you see like between them two, like, I mean, the drop off between Kelsey and them is like 3000. Do you, I mean, do you see anything worth going after them too, or do you go even lower? I, I'm willing to go even lower. My, my guy is Trey McBride. And, and I know this is going to sound like a complete home pick. But you, nobody can tell me that Pat Fryermuth deserves to be below three thousand. I don't. I don't care who you are. I can. <laughs> I, I I agree with the if if <laughs> if Fryermuth was uh, if he had a better quarterback, man. And they, I mean, I love Pat Fryermuth, and he was. I mean, he was even good last year with Pickett. But Pickett's just he's totally regressed, and I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what they're doing. Um, they're really in on the run game there, though. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the Najee Harris and, and Jalen Warren show. Um, there is, so I like Ink right around that price point as well. I also like David and Joku. He saw 15 yep. targets last week, 15 targets. So even if he only has, you know, even if he has, even if he pulls off, you know, another eight target game, um, I've been stacking up like in, in like a little mini stack. I've been doing uh, Jerome Ford and David and Joku. Um, so I like those guys. But I don't I, honestly below that. I don't. The only other person I can think of would maybe be like Johnu Smith. Um, yeah, that would be the only other guy that I would think I would get to. But uh, other than that, I, I said Michael Mayer um, in uh, in in the show on Friday, but I've kind of come off of him a little bit. I kind of like the, the spot where I'm at. I, I, I always find myself landing on Trey McBride, um, Evan Ingram, David and Joku. The only lineups that I'm putting. Um, that I'm putting Kincaid or Schultz in is uh, are my stacks with either Allen or um, CJ Stroud. Yeah. So now I have, I'm, I'm stuck on mine for a flex. So I have a flex question for you. I got six grand remaining for my flex. Do I go either Singletary Ridley? Do I go lower or, or do, yeah. Or do I go lower and then buy a better quarterback than what I have right now? I'm willing to go with Christian Kirk at 5,700 over Ridley. If if yeah, I'm not I, mistaken, I don't have the board in front of me, but I think Ridley's still priced more than more than Kirk, right? Yeah, 300. Yeah, yeah I'm willing to I go 5,700. I don't I don't like Singletary. Damian Pierce is back, so um, I I think I think Singletary's carved out a role for sure, but I think it's more of a snap share more than anything. I, he just I don't see the upside. Um, for Singletary anymore. Like last week, I was 100. I mean, I think he was in 95% of my loss, him and Robinson Jr. And uh, 
I, I won't have a single piece of Singletary this week. Um, I I don't like chasing Ridley at six K. Um, I, I I'm pretty pretty in agreement with uh, with with Brian. I would go like a Christian Kirk, or like I could even pay down a little bit more and go like a Jerome Ford or a Jalen Warren. Um, it just depends on what kind of contest you're in though too. Kirk for me would be more of a tournament play just because the upside's a little bit higher with uh, wide receivers. Um, if you're playing a little bit more conservative in, in like a cash game, um, like you know that you know you know the uh, Ford and Warren are going to get a lot of work too, and their floor is a little bit safer. I mean, we saw last week Kirk had like seven or eight points. So yeah, but he's been for, for the year he's been the best wide receiver in Jacksonville to me for sure. Now yeah, he's the been the most thing, consistent. The other thing that you've got interesting, I'm pretty sure Zay Jones is back, right? Yeah. So that really muddies up the target some as well. And real quick, just because you guys have touched on Cleveland um, and the defense, but you didn't touch on uh, the Browns' defense, they are a really nasty unit. What is your thoughts on on them this week? Is that somebody you'd be willing to take a flyer on? Once again, homer pick for me. I'd pay. I'd pay down a hundred dollars and go get the Steelers. But I, yeah, I'm in this. I'm in the same boat with Brian, and it's and it's the only reason why is because typically the highest price defense doesn't pay off. Um, you know, the Cowboy. We've seen the Cowboys do it once, and I think we've seen the forty. No, I don't think the 49ers have done it for the highest price. I know the Cowboys have done it, but they're they're very good at at, at scoring. Um, although Cleveland's pretty shut down, very rarely do they. You know, they punch one into the end zone or anything like that. And like I said, I just the way Denver's been playing lately, um, not saying that, you know, they're good by any means, but they've been playing some good ball the last three weeks. So it just kind of has me shying away. I do think Cleveland maybe has a little bit of the life sucked out of them with uh, all the injuries they've had. And they're kind of this is kind of a dead season for them right now. Yeah, the Broncos have actually won four in a row. They went from one and four to to um one and five to five and five. So yeah. Yeah, nice little bounce back for the Broncos. Much to the chagrin of, of Mr. Jarvis, but Mrs. Jarvis loves it. So, <laughs> all righty, guys, that will take us to the end of this segment. On the other side of the house, we will take a look at uh, Danny's betting stuff and see what we like in all of those plays and parlays. Take your energy level to new heights this football season with Lifted Energy. Try any of Lifted's nine specialty energy drinks or create your own and conquer fatigue. Visit Lifted this fall at 2430 16th Street Moline or check their Facebook page at Lifted Energy to see what festival, market, or fair they are popping up at today. Lifted Energy, get lifted. Hate mowing? Need your lawn or business landscaped? Having trouble with an unruly yard that your neighbors hate? Yard Barbers LLC is your hookup. Mowing, weeding, edging, trimming, aerating, fertilizing, haul away, they can do it all. And they aren't just good for your summertime yard blues. They work all year long, and you can get signed up for their winter services for that annoying snow and ice removal. Find Yard Barbers on Facebook at Yard Barbers LLC, send them an email at yardbarbersqc at gmail.com, or shoot them a text at 309-235-1595. All righty, that then we will jump in back here. Uh, so let's take a look. Danny, I'm going to turn it over to you. A uh, reminder that his Golden Ticket Show is coming up after this one at the bottom of the hour. So make sure that you hang around or stay tuned for that. But what are you looking at this week, sir, in terms of where we want to put some money down? Yeah. So I like a lot this week. Um, I just I knew I had to chill because the last time I said I liked a lot, I struggled mightily. So, but um, if you guys have been following us this week, we're up almost uh, four and a half units, um, just off college football alone. Um, we're up, we're twenty five and twenty and six units up for the for the week right now, um, including uh, I believe I just had it up a second ago. Um, we're 11 and six on our NFL plays already this week from Thursday's Thanksgiving games and Friday's games. So 
we we really are we're pushing a lot of these out um so the first one i really really liked is i mentioned it earlier tampa bay indianapolis under now i this one's more of a just from what i've seen from indy in the last couple of weeks um a friend of mine that writes for action network uh mentioned it to me that indy is due for some kind of regression a lot of their you know those last minute touchdowns and a lot of their in-game kind of plays resulted in, you know, it was all like their high scoring games were results of last minute comebacks or just one play where like the cornerback slipped and the guy was open for an, for an extra 40 yard touchdown pass, like things like that. I, the way Tampa has been playing the last couple of weeks, I think this game is almost definitely going under Tampa is under on Every, um, eight of their 10 games this year, they other than the Houston game, that was a 76 point just scoring fest. They have not given up more than 26 points this year. And they, but their offense isn't scoring at a rate of a team that can compete with 26 points right now, no matter how good Mike Evans is um, and mid level Baker Mayfield is. So, and Indy is, they're due for some kind of regression. We saw it when they played Carolina. It was a, a team that likes to play slow. It was a 40 point game. And the only reason it was a 40 point game in total was because there were two pick sixes. Uh, you took those away. The score was 13 to uh, 13 to 14. Um, and then you had new England, which that was a 10, six game that I think was probably the most boring London game I've ever seen in my life. So I like I said, they were due for some regression. Um, they went from scoring almost 40 points a game in the month of October to their first two games only scoring nine and a half points. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, 14 and a half points, but still they're they're due for some regression. I think the Minshew magic slowly wearing off a bit. Um, even though I am high on him this week and I'm high on Mayfield, I think that game goes under. Our next one is I took I took this on Monday when it was Pick'em odds and it's moved up a bit with the move, the news that uh, Kieran Williams is back, but I took Arizona money line. Um, you could take it on the spread. I took it again at plus one twenty. I just think the way I've seen this team play and the way this Rams team is kind of heading, I I think this is a a big spot for Arizona to win a game in front of their hometown fans against a division rival. Arizona has not played that bad. We saw them last week against the Texans playing great. You have Matthew Stafford, who isn't 100% healthy. One one solid hit, and I think he crumples to the ground again. Kieran Williams is back, but Arizona's defense has not been as bad as a lot of people think. It was just their offense couldn't get anything going. Their defense has been, especially in the first half, their defense has been very sneaky. Um, So worst case, I would take first half money line for sure. Um, I'm about to actually place that one here in a minute, but uh, yeah, Ari- I'm high on Arizona this week. I think just everything I've seen from the Rams with their players constantly getting hurt. Um, they don't really have a secondary. Um, it's just Aaron Donald kind of terrorizing people into making bad decisions. So I, I think Arizona could pull this one out this week. <clears throat> um, we got then my next play is I took Cleveland Denver under. I think this is going to be an ugly game. Like this, this is going to be a game where it's it's going to finish. I don't know how it's going to get through the first three quarters. It's going to be like six to seven, and then it's somehow going to finish close, like right on the edge of 37, 37 and a half. But I I love that play. I think it's dropped down a couple points since I. No, it's right around the same amount. Um, but Denver play has been playing very slow with as much as their offense has been playing great. Cleveland does not have a quarterback and against the Denver team, that is the worst rushing defense in the NFL. They're going to be running the ball. They've even said it that Ford and hunt are going to be dominating the touches today. We're not going to see a lot from the wide receivers. It's going to be runs all day long. We're going to see, you know, almost like an Iowa college offense. It's going to be just run after run after run after run after run. So I love uh, the under there. Um, I'm all, I think I'm all unders today. Actually. My next play is I took under in the chiefs game at 43 and a half. Um, DJ made sure to text me first thing this morning. 
um, so let me know I was wrong about that one. But I, I just think I know there's the you know KC plays great in Vegas. The, these two teams will play great against each other. I just until I see otherwise, I'm taking Kansas City on the under every single time. Um, they're there. I think last I saw, where is it? I have it pulled up here. Matter of fact, Doug, can I share my screen for a minute? Absolutely, sir. So this is outlier.bet is the research app I use for this. As you can see here, when the line is 42 and a half, where it's at now, they're under six of the, they went under six of the 10 games. Now I caught this line when it was at 43 and a half and it goes up. And if you look at their scores, they other, once they played that game where they won 41 to 10, it has been close games. Their offense has not had, anything explosive except against possibly the worst passing defense in the NFL named the Los Angeles chargers, but everything else, a game they should have won. They scored nine. They didn't, they haven't scored in the second half in three consecutive games. I don't see them scoring 28 points in the first half, given how they played the last three weeks, which means, and I also don't see Aiden O'Connell going off for 30, 40 points this week in that offense. So I, I like this under, I think that Kansas city is just going to have these slow kind of str- not only say struggles, but it's going to be long drives again. And they're going to turn Vegas over too much to justify taking this over. Unless they just say, we're going to put 60 points on your head and let you guys deal with it, which I, I don't think that's happening this week. Um, and then my last, I have two, we have a teaser. And we have um, a play for the four o'clock games. I took Philly money line. I'm done with the Bills. Um, I'm on the same bus as Joe Winkle. These are this is one of the most mid teams in the league. You can call it struggles with like the offensive coordinator. You can call it whatever. I think we're we. I think that they're gonna come into Philly. Josh Allen's gonna struggle. And we're going to go back to the same conversation we're having every other week, where is, is Josh Allen a good quarterback or does he just have a big arm? Like what? And, but I think the way Philly coming off that big win, there's a lot of motivation to not only take out KC, but to take out Buffalo to show that they can beat every team in the AFC. And they're going to come out and dominate today. Um, particularly also with the fact that Buffalo's defense is so injured that I, don't, I can't name more than four players on that, def- on that starting 11. So I I think we can see a bounce back for AJ Brown after last week. They're going to try to force him the ball after a tough week. They're, they're going to dominate this game. I'm surprised it was at 170 when I caught it. Um, and then our last one was we took a teaser on two bets I liked, but the lines were a little too close for my comfort. Um, we took a teaser on Houston and on the to cover the spread and Baltimore and the Chargers over um, the spread drops it down to Houston plus seven and Baltimore and LA over 42 and a half. This game's going to be close. If Houston doesn't win it, they're de- they're definitely not losing by more than seven. Um, they're not they're not going to let Jackson uh, a game that could potentially decide who gets first place in the a um, in the AFC South. They're not going to let this be a blowout. So I like the just taking the extra points there, buying down for it. And Baltimore has had one of the best offenses in the league, and the Chargers have the worst passing defense in the NFL. We saw Jordan Love throw for almost 300 yards against them and look like an MVP-level player that one week. Um, give, give me the over on that in general, but I also took the points down just for this teaser. I love the play right there. So let's see, that's Houston plus seven. Baltimore uh, Chargers over 42 and a half. Um, those are all our plays for today. Um, we're going to break down some more of the slate. We're going to put together a big parlay um, on our 1230 show. So make sure you guys check that out. And we're also going to have some basketball um, for the NBA and college basketball coming out um, in the next couple hours. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Awesome. All right, cool. All right. That was a lot of good stuff. In there. So make sure that you get those bets played before, before kickoff today. Make sure you can get yourself a little cash there. All righty. We don't have Joe this week. Does anybody have any hot takes before we 
move into. I want to take a quick look at the Thanksgiving draft that we did, but I want to give you guys the floor to, for the hot take segment, if you guys have any this week. I had one, but then they fired Matt Canada, so I couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it, it, was gonna be, it was going to be that Matt Canada has like some incriminating evidence against the Roonies, and that's why they couldn't get rid of him. I, I'm still surprised as a Steelers fan they fired him midseason. They don't typically do that, so they know he really sucks. Listen, we're either going to see Kenny Pickett struggle so bad that we say, oh, it wasn't Matt Canada's fault, or we see him go off for a godlike performance. A, a little tidbit for those that are setting DFS lineups and stuff. Um, word came out on NBC Edge a few minutes ago that the new offensive coordinator is going to concentrate on Jalen Warren and and Pickens getting more more opportunities and touches. So Pickens is sitting down there at real cheap at around 48. I think it's either 48 or 4,900. So. And to Brian's point, I saw uh, earlier this week that the last time or the only time that Steelers had an in-season firing was like – 1971 or something like that and it was the owner was also part coach and he fired himself from being the coach <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> meanwhile, so, as a pa- meanwhile as a panthers fan we just go through firing everyone bringing in steve wilkes and then not giving the job to steve wilkes <laughs> yeah that's the one thing about the state their consistency to me is second to none with the few, with only three coaches since like what three head coaches since like 1970 or 71, something like that. Noel to Noel to um, Cower to, to Tom. Yep, that's it. That's crazy. Okay, so when when was the last time that a one and team ever came back to win the play or make the playoffs? Has it ever happened? Oh man, we need we need a research guy here, don't we? Yeah, because that my take is that uh, the Broncos squeak in on the number uh, with the eight seed. Or the seven, seventies, seven, seven, yeah. No, nah, I'll, I'll give you a hot take. Stroud wins MVP. That's my hot take. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be between Stroud and Hill, and Stroud's gonna win it because it's a rookie that took a one and fifteen team or a two and fourteen team to the top of the division in one season. And he's a quarterback. My yeah. my hot take is, I, I hope there's no Jets fans listening, but your off team is putrid right now. That's a Not cold a take. Hot. That's everyone's take. That's a lukewarm <laughs> take. <laughs> it's uh, anytime. I don't know the Jets schedule for the rest of the season, but if I was in contention for the playoffs, I would be looking for streamable defenses. Just if you've got extra roster spots, just go ahead and stream the rest of the year against the Jets. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of the play to make. Because yeah, that is that's no bueno. Up there. Tim Boyle now officially the statistically worst quarterback in NFL history. Uh, so well, bad. except for the fact Zach Wilson might be it too. <laughs> at least, at least he didn't get benched for Zach Wilson. Yeah, yeah, that'd be well, wild. Hey, get, 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 get back out there. <laughs> Trade Mike yeah. White mid game. Bring him back in a Jets jersey. <laughs> Where is he now? Tampa I mean, or somewhere? He's in Miami. 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 I think they could roll out Namath at this point. And it's going to be an upgrade. So listen, I had I had friends at that game that were decked out in Santa outfits that were all Jets themed. Like they were there tailgating from like eight in the morning, and he left the game in the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot you you're, you live in New York, don't you? Yeah. Do, do you have a favorite team? Not really. I I would say. In New York, you have to pick a team, whether they're your team or not. You have to pick some kind of alliance. Um, I'm Giants. I'm Giants Knicks, and I declined baseball because I'm a Braves fan, and I was raised to hate both New York teams. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that at that current, the Giants and Jets could combine the roster and still not get to the playoffs. So. <laughs> All right. I want to jump in, take a quick look at the Thanksgiving draft of that. We ran that my business partner almost forgot about until I mentioned it to him. So we are going to take a quick look at that. It is an annual tradition here uh, in case that this is your first year with us. Basically, this started back when it was just the three, us three guys. Um, we basically had a Thanksgiving side draft. It's, a, it's expanded a little bit just because we have a bigger staff nowadays. Um, but basically what we do 
is we go through and you pick different Thanksgiving things that you enjoy. Um, typical draft kind of style here. Let me bump up the screen a little bit. The joke that runs here that you will hear us joking about year over year is early on, like the first year, I can't remember if we took it one on one or one on two, but you took DJ took deviled eggs very early on. And I took a lot of, not offense to it, but I basically said, why in God's name would you ever take deviled eggs that early? They're not, they're not worthy of that spot. And that has basically become the running joke uh, here with all of us is that they are, um, you know, always too early, shouldn't be taken, those types of things. Um, so that's kind of where this started and how it kind of perpetuates. But this is basically kind of the way, the what we ran this year. Um, so I want to kind of take a look at uh, what we've got here for you guys and see kind of what we think. I think everybody here, Brian, did you participate? You did not. So you can be our uh, our neutral party here. I, I wanted. I would have loved to participate, but I probably missed it on Discord. Is what probably happened. So. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I think that's where we. Uh, I think that. I think that. That's what we did. Is on. Uh, is on Slack there. So. Just taking a quick look at these, I won't read all of them to you, but basically 101 was pumpkin pie by Brixie. Um, I followed up with stuffing. Uh, DJ didn't take his deviled eggs until uh, round two. And then uh, Joe Winkle closed this off of colors with the with an ice cold beer because DJ decided to do drinks this year. So <laughs> no, nothing too great. I mean, there's I mean there's some different I'm questioning stuff on Nick's. Here. I'm questioning Nick's because, like, it, Nick looks like the guy that he gets the first pick and he picks Justin Jefferson and he picks his second pick and then he forgets he has to draft his third and his fourth and his fifth. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, God, what's available? Okay, cool. I'll take the, like, like, I, like you got lasagna, taco salad, and then chocolate milk. Like, that just, ugh. Yeah, that's not a good grouping. <laughs> I'm just saying the guy, whoever picked number four, like, that's the best one I've seen ever. Like, yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. the, yeah. <laughs> do, do any of y'all eat lasagna for Thanksgiving? No, I do not. I'll tell you what. I'll tell talent. you what. I would, and I would never do that for Thanksgiving. There's been a lot of people, especially lately, who've been a lot of like Mexican fiestas, like or like a taco bar instead of like doing all the fixings for Thanksgiving, like just wow. doing a big old crock pot of ground beef. And have not. Yeah, we had actually considered doing sides giving. Um, like last year or or this year, and I th and that's probably something that we should do. Yeah. I allow the I allow the, the lasagna because when Sicoli was still on staff, for you guys who don't, uh, for you guys who know Michael Sicoli, uh, he comes from a big Italian family, and like lasagna is like their thing on like just about every holiday. So lasagna always gets a pass here for those. Yeah, I had to take lobster just because DJ demanded a protein, and I'm like. If you don't know, you you're, you're you're gonna be nothing hit. but like appetizers and dips and sides, and you forget there's a turkey. Yeah, exactly. I could do with just I could do without a turkey and just have the sides personally. I was, but I was gonna say I knew I got I knew I got dug when I put s'mores dip because I got a DM five seconds later like what is this <laughs> what's this what, recipe what is <laughs> what is this warlock that you speak of and and being perfectly honest i don't typically like gravy but there are some turkeys you almost have to have gravy with because they come out a little dry so, yeah, yeah we did steak this year just because it was me and my girlfriend and i wasn't about to cook a whole turkey for two people yeah. no that sounds good actually steak mm -hmm. you guys ever had deep fried turkey that's really good yeah we had I it this burn year. my house down we had it this year <laughs> he got a thought jordan <laughs> oh i just tossed He's... it in there <laughs> yeah that's why your house is gonna burn down <laughs> yeah, yeah they did it at my sister-in-law's house this year deep fried it was good yeah we yeah, did you always want to sit at somebody else's house you want to eat it somewhere yeah else, but... we did like instead of friends giving on one board. year we called it uh trash giving and it was everyone brought food from whatever re like fast food place you went to when you were absolutely hammered like in your oh, go-to okay. drunk food, everyone brought their own. So we had like a whole thing. It was like like a hundred piece McNugget, like fifty White Castle Taco sliders. Bell. Like someone brought like a bunch of bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches from the delis. 
Like it, it, some person brought like three family boxes of cereal. It was it was the most chaotic meal I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> my my one on one on that would have to be the White Castle for sure. Oh yeah, we don't have one of those around here. Jordan, have you ever had it? I've never had White Castle. Uh, uh, so we you I thought that the, the taste isn't that great, but the memories of it are, are, are awesome. White Castle, great. the White Castle is like Waffle House, like what Waffle House is in the South is like what White Castle is in the Northeast. See, <laughs> like, I think what I think what I've had, I've I've had White Castle once, and and they put like the like smeared onions on their burger. Like I don't mind it at McDonald's, but I I was not a fan. Yeah, you yeah you don't like. I always have to u- order like Uber Eats because if you go inside a White Castle, you're never gonna want to eat there. <laughs> My, my That's mom, why you go there when you're drunk. My mom was not a fan of those. She uh, she thought the burgers and all that were so small, so she would throw away the buns for one of the burger and do- and make a double burger out of it. So see, I growing up in the South, we didn't have it. We had crystals, and it yeah. was the same thing, but with mustard on it. And I took my friend one time. He grew up in Staten Island. And I took him uh, when we were down in uh, Florida. We went to Crystals. And he's like one bite and he threw like his entire 20 pack away. He's like, I'm not touching this ever. <laughs> the funny thing here in Nashville is, and I don't know that it still exists. It may be gone, but there was actually one corner of, uh, in town that had a white castle and across the street was a crystal. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a, I'm more of a white castle man than a crystal for whatever uh, reason. So. I just need my cookout and my waffle house. That's it. And I'm good. All righty, cool. Okay, so that'll take us to the end of this segment. If you haven't gotten in your questions, we've already got some in, but if you haven't gotten your questions in yet, now is the time. We're making that the last call. We're going to go to our last commercial break. On the other side of that, we will answer questions, and we will um, wrap this baby up. Do you love everything sports? So do we. That's why we shop at Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles. Atomic has everything you could ever want to blow up your collections. They have sports cards ranging from the 1980s to today, whether it's singles, wax packs, hangers, or boxes. They've got vintage hats, clothes, and collectibles from your favorite teams to widen your collection. Check out Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles today at 102 4th Street West, Milan, Illinois. You from the West, the podcast covering Illinois high school football. (laughs) Weekly analysis and reaction from around the western side of the state of Illinois. This is the game we had circled when the year started. Follow along on YouTube and Twitter and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. It's big time football out there tonight, and I know we can play big time football. (laughs) You from the West, we got you covered. All righty, welcome back. I'm going to readjust the screen. All right, if you haven't got any of your questions yet, it is time. Let's see what the nice folks have for us today. We will bat lead off with Miss Lydia, just like always. There we go. Kieran Williams was listed as healthy, so for my second wide receiver spot, should I start Williams, Devontae Smith? Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf, man, you are loaded. Well, I guess part of the problem I'm going to have with this is is DK and Tyler Lockett have already played, so I'm going to have to go with Devontae Smith. Sounds like, yeah, this, she's in she's in my league. This is our super stack six six man league. Um, she also has Mahomes and Jefferson too, so she's she's stacked. Um, no, I think. I think Kieran Williams might be the the play here. I I think that from everything I've seen, the way that the uh, Bills play, Devontae Smith struggles against this type of defense. And with AJ Brown only getting one target last week, he's he's gonna he's gonna have to do more for them to win this week. And they're gonna try to force feed him the ball. So I would go uh, Kieran Williams. And I kind of miss. I I have to admit, I somewhat missed the question. You just they just need one for a flex, right? Yeah, yeah. I can I can go with Williams on that as well. Yeah, I like Williams. All right. Also up for Miss Lydia, uh, starting Jacobs and Pacheco right now. Um, 
Do we want to put Williams in over <laughs> either of those guys? She just texted me. She messed up her first question. She thought Williams was a wide receiver. It's so okay. this is this was her actual question. <laughs> I still, I still say Williams, and I say switch him out for Pacheco. Uh, I think kind of, kind of like, uh, kind of like Dan's point as far as the under to that game. I think that the Raiders lean heavy on Jacobs today, try to eat up some of the clock, and um, I just, I like, I don't know, I really, really like Williams coming back. I'm gonna fall into a potential trap, but I, I, I definitely go Williams here. But I think that Pacheco is going to have one of her bigger, one of his bigger um, volumes in regards to carries this week. Next up, Mr. Nathan H. Herbert or Fields this week? The answer to me is never Fields, so I'm going Her- Herbert. And now Brian's been fired by both DJ and I. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like Fields. the The matchup's just a little bit better. So, since this is the late night play mixed with um, the Monday night, I would say wait to the last minute and watch what the Ravens' defense is doing because there were a couple potential injuries. I've seen that a lot of people were saying, um, you know, like if Marlon Humphrey's out, you might want to lean more towards Herbert. But I think with it being a division rivalry game. Um, I think I think Fields is going to have a good game. He he's played well against them somewhat, um, and I just the way Justin Herberts has been playing, I just wouldn't trust it. Yeah, I'll take the homer pick and take Fields, but I can definitely see the case being made for Herbert. To be I, fair, Doug, the last time you took a, a home run pick, um, you hit it because you told us to start Dalton Schultz. Yeah, Lions scroll finds a nut every once in a while. The only thing I wish the Bears would do is be consistent with their game plan. Either you pass more, you run more, or or don't always just be completely opposite and do neither a lot. So, Much like the Steelers, we are waiting out the season, and then they're going to fire the entire coaching staff, and we're going to start all over again. <laughs> that is what is happening. And we're waiting for the same thing up in Chicago for the Bulls, so, you know, we're just <laughs> got their own. Got it, it's okay. Show. You guys get the white sauce. So- oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, no, you got yeah. the Cubs. Just, they almost made the playoffs. <laughs> Chicago is the city of resets this year in 2024. Good Lord. All right. Next up is another Kyron Williams question. Or Williams or Jamar Chase. Oof. I would still go Williams. I I just I want to see what uh Browning can do before I want to make because I mean obviously we um you know, they're going to try to get it to wide receiver one regardless. And But the thing is, is I feel like it's going to be a lot of screen passes today. And can you trust Jamar Chase to break through nine defensive players that know exactly what he's doing every single time? Let's just I'll, – I'll, I'll agree with Williams here. Let's just say that Browning played basically, I think, a little bit more than a half. And for the entire game, Chase had two catches for, I think, 12 yards and a touchdown at the last – under the two-minute warning. So – I don't know if that was a precursor for today, but as a Steelers fan, I'm hoping so. Jordan, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I like I like Williams. Like it, like uh, more to Dan's point. Like I just I, I've got to see what uh, what Browning can do before I fully trust what Jamar Chase is going to be capable of. Fair enough. Next up is Mr. Dillon. Uh, a few start sits. Uh, Pick one flex, Hollywood, Downs, or Hunt, or Cook. Pick one wide receiver of DJM or Ridley, and then one wide, one running back of Ford, single, Ford Singletary or Connor, and then Odell, Cooper, Ty Chandler, or Mitchell. So, we got a few picks from. Let's we'll start with the first one for the flex, Hollywood, Downs, Hunt, and Cook. Downs for me. Yeah. I, I was I'm I'm kind of heavy on Hunt. I actually put him in a stack in my daily fantasy with Ford just to get either of them, um, regardless. But um, not a bad play. I, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm gonna go Hunt. I'm gonna stick with that because he seemed to take out when once he got going last week. Um, he kind of took over the rest of the snaps. They're kind of doing it by committee. Was was the last name James Cook? I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going Hunt also. But it's close between him and Downs. 
right, next up, DJ Moore or Ridley? DJ Moore. I'm going to go, even though I just kind of bashed um, fails, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go DJ Moore. I think you're chasing points on Ridley. Yeah, Ridley's probably the higher ceiling. Moore's probably the higher floor. Yep. All right. And then pick one running back of Ford Singletary or the Terminator. Ford. Okay. James, I'm Connor, a- James Connor has to try to get past Aaron Donald. I'm, I'm going to stick with Ford and stick with the Browns running backs against the worst defense this week. I'm going to ask a stupid question. Who's the Terminator? James Connor. Connor. Did James. you not watch the Terminator movies, Brian? Come on. I've I've seen him, but I'm old at this point. In time. I forgot him. So. Yeah, I'll, I like. Go. Uh, go ahead, Jordan. I like Ford. Um, like Singletary's going to be split in touches, and then same thing. Uh, you know, Connor's got a tougher matchup. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going Ford here also. All right. Next up, also from Mr. Dillon. Do you want the Denver defense versus the Browns or the Titans defense versus Carolina? We also have I'm a gonna go with question, Denver. but we'll get to that in a sec. I'm going to go with Denver, even though it's hard to trust the defense. They gave up 73 points to the Dolphins. They've vastly improved, so I'll go with Denver. Yeah, I was. Gonna, I'd say – Denver too, just because we already cut everyone kind of knows what's going to happen this week. They've stated it multiple times. It's just going to be run, 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 run. So they, they kind of, even though I don't think they'll be able to stop them as much. Um, like I said, it, it's not going to be enough to, they're going to blow you out the water with scoring. I almost like the Titans in this one. They're home um, and, and the running game for Carolina is not great. And then that means that Bryce Young is going to have to beat you. And I just don't think Bryce Young can do it, especially on the road. So I'm going to go Titans. I think I'm leaning Denver with, with the other guys. All right. On the kickers. Uh, Dicker at home versus Baltimore or Joseph on the road versus Chicago? Who was the first one? I'm you sorry. Not start, a qu- not start a kicker? That might be more beneficial. Yeah. Probably it's a requirement. Uh, who, who was it other than Joseph? Uh, yeah, Cameron, Dicker. Cameron Dicker from the Chargers. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go Joseph. Yeah. I. Yeah, I think I like Joseph. Yeah, same. And give me always give me the the kicker kicking in indoors if you can. All right, Jordan with a wrong take of Devil Eggs is number one. Make sure we click that. All right, next up. Jordan is now banned from the show. <laughs> I, I do I do like deviled eggs, but they wouldn't have been my number one. How about that? All right, JT Alave or Puka for a flex and a full PPR. I think you have to go with oh God, that's a tough one. Was the first name JT? Jonathan Taylor. I was Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Taylor would, for me. Also, yeah, I think Jonathan Taylor. I mean, if if uh, if Cup would have been out, I would have gone with Puka, but I like Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, I feel like that's the right answer there. Uh, I don't got an opinion on this one. All right, fair enough. Next up, speaking of Mr. Rangel, Jeff Jacobs or Isaiah Pacheco? Bench them both. Woo, hot take. I'm not answering after you said that about deviled eggs. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Deviled eggs number one. You don't get any advice. I'm going to go with yeah. Josh Jacobs. You're, you're, I'll give a serious answer. Josh Jacobs. I think even though Pacheco is going to have more volume, Jacobs will have more than Pacheco. And I, usually that's how I base my answers. So. You're rocking deviled eggs that early. You probably drafted Kirk Cousins we, uh, round one in your draft, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Not only that, like Jordan that. also is the guy who forces us to answer kicker questions a lot of weeks too. So <laughs> I like that. I to, for real though, for real answer, Josh Jacobs. I like Josh Jacobs over Pacheco. Same. All right, and then last but certainly not least, Sino Rafael Warren over Bijan. Any thoughts on that? I like who Warren, is it over Bijan? Uh, 
Warren. Jalen Warren. Warren. Yeah, like give me Warren. Warren. Mm-hmm. Bengals no. don't have a good run defense. I mean, the way Derrick Henry's been playing this year, and they let Derrick Henry go for over 100. Um, and we kind of saw it last week. Once Warren got – like, Warren may not get a lot of touches, but he's going to break one for 50. Not so today. They were, kind of, they were talking about it earlier, about how uh, um, the what the new coordinator was talking about getting Pickens and Warren the ball a little bit more. Um, I can't believe you'll have a, a more biased pick, Brian. I I like Warren. I'm going to be John Robinson, not even close. Oh, wow. It, I like that. Everybody's going to surprise Arthur you. Arthur Smith is listening, and he's not going to play him this week. Uh, everybody's <laughs> going to surprise The situation is going to surprise you. Najee will lead the team in, in rushes and yards. It's a smoke screen. I like that. That's a good take, Brian. I'm going to be really mad, though, because I have a lot of Jalen Warren in DFS this week. He'll get he'll get his touches, but they won't be impressive. So I just hope the Steelers win and Warren doesn't do that much. <laughs> That's me. Uh, I will take <laughs> Bijan in that scenario just for giggles, I guess. All right. That is the end of the question. So let's go ahead, throw out, give me your quarterback one for this week. Hurts. Kenny Pickett. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with he Hurts. Took, he took away my Kenny Pickett number one hater uh, logo thing. <laughs> on my <laughs> brand. I like, uh, I like CJ Stroud. I like Stroud to be the number one. That's not a bad choice. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I'm trying to look to see here. Give me Lamar. Like that. Uh, running back one this week. Jonathan Taylor. I'm going to go with the name we haven't said. We haven't mentioned once. I'm going to go DeAndre Swift. He's like four for four going over like 75 yards in primetime games this year. Well, I like that. I'm going Derrick Henry. I think Derrick Henry, uh, I think we get uh, Henry this week. It's not bad. Give me Saquon, or he'll either there or he'll get hurt. One of the two. <laughs> Give me Tommy DeVito, QB1. Actually, I want to change my pick to Kyron Williams. That's that's my number one. Uh, wide receiver one. Who do you guys like this week? Justin Jefferson. No. Um, let's see. Who the heck is I'm gonna go. I'm going to go A.J. Brown this week. I'm going to go the opposite of A.J. Brown. I'm going to say Stefan Diggs. I almost went with Allen as the QB1. It's, it's you know, yeah, they had a decent game, and they've been kind of down. But, man, I tell you what, the Eagle, Josh Allen's got one of those games in him that feels like this week. So I'm going to in a, Stephon Diggs. In, in a complete surprise pick, instead of Tank Dell, I'm going with Nico Collins for, for wide receiver one. I like that. I'll homer this and take DJ Moore this week. Maybe he gets lucky and gets, gets lit. All right, and then tight end one. Who do you guys like? I'm all over McBride here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with who I was rocking earlier. I'm gonna go Evan Ingram. Come on, Jordan. You know you want to say McBride. Uh, I know. See, I was. So I like McBride. I, I honestly, I was gonna either go with uh, either in Joku or Kincaid. I have to let me go with Kincaid. I'll take Kincaid. I like that matchup. Tell you what, then I'll take Njoku just to just so that you can cover all that we can cover all. Yeah, the bases. I, I feel I feel like I win either way. There you go. <laughs> all righty, that will take us to the end of this. Uh, we hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, we appreciate everybody for tuning in, uh, watching us every week. Make sure that you are staying tuned for Danny Show. That will start here in a couple of minutes. Uh, check in tonight with the cards per subject for change guys. We'll have Danny tomorrow, uh, Monday night with his next show. Uh, Joe Winkle will be showing up at some point doing his 16 shows a week. Um, other than that, we will, we will take, uh, we will see you guys next week. Uh, everybody have a lovely week and we will talk to you next time. Right, see ya.